Hey, welcome to MIT. I'm Quentin MacArthur, the Associate Director of Admissions, uh, but I actually prefer the title Director of Overall Inspiration. Are you ready for this? I'm here with Cody Coleman, computer science and uh, electrical engineering major, 2013 alum of MIT. He is from the great state of New Jersey. Woo, woo. Cody, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too, Quinn. Why don't you introduce yourself? So I'm currently a uh, master's of engineering student at MIT in electrical engineering and computer science. Uh, I'm actually finishing up on Monday, I've finished my thesis and everything like that, so. Oh my God. Yeah. You're gonna graduate? Yeah. <laughs> like right now? Yeah, like right now, well, Monday. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. So let's start here. Let's learn a little bit more about the Cody Coleman story. You start talking a little bit about being from the great state of New Jersey, which is powerful in and of itself. Yeah. But we need a little bit more context to really understand, like, so so how you got to MIT? So growing up, uh, my father left before I was born, and my mom was actually in prison uh, for threatening to kill a senator's child, and she was declared mentally insane. So I grew up with my grandmother, and by that point, uh, my grandmother and my grandfather, uh, by that point, though, they weren't really well off. We were actually pretty much poor the entire time that I was growing up because my grandparents had retired. My mom was in jail for about a year and then she was released. Even though like my grandmother let my mom live with, uh, with us, uh, they never got along. They were constantly fighting and everything like that. So it's constant chaos going up. I went to just a public high school in New Jersey, in um, Camden County, New Jersey, specifically Winslow Township High School. Uh, so my high school wasn't great at all. We were about 200 points below the state average on the SAT. Uh, and we were, we were a very diverse school. Um, we had about probably 60% of students were on free or reduced lunch, which included me. And my brother, he like left for school and like he wanted nothing to do with the family, so he just moved and like lost contact. He kind of came back into my life uh, to kind of give me guidance and stuff like that because he was like, you know what, I don't want Cody to go through the same like struggle that I had. And he asked me, so where do you want to go to, to college? And at that point, I like had barely thought about college. I was like, like, I immediately said, they'll never accept someone like me. And even if they did, I couldn't afford it. But my brother, he kind of like, uh, I guess broke that down. He's like, what are you talking about? Like, you're doing all right in school right now. You just need to like work even harder and stuff like that and push yourself. And if you get into one of those top schools, like money's not going to be an issue. Like if you get in, they'll figure out a way for you to go. So I don't know. I just kind of, I took that to heart and I kind of went from like, why, like, why bother to why not? Seeing my brother, he was, he did a lot of IT work uh, in computers. So uh, when, I, when I saw kind of him do that, I kind of took an interest in computers and stuff like that. I never actually realized that you could actually do computer engineering or software development as a career. Like that just like didn't register with me until I started looking at colleges. Tell me about your research, but don't be too technical. Okay. Because I'm a regular person. Um, I got involved with a program through MISTI, MISTI Mexico, to go to Mexico City for six weeks to develop um, this software to allow Mexican universities to take their syllabus or syllabi from their classes and map it to online materials from around the world. So like think like you have a class on mechanics and you want to say like, oh, you can get extra resources on MIT's OCW or like any of the other universities that have open resources and stuff like that. So it provides a lot of extra resources to those st uh, students um, from like these top uh, universities. For me, like I, I always wanted to give back to education because it did so much for me. So I got involved with uh, the Office of Digital Learning. I reached out to Sanjay Sarma as soon as he was appointed the director of the Office of Digital Learning. I was like, hey, like, I think that this digital learning stuff can help with global education. So I met with him, and at the end of a 30-minute conversation, he offered me my position for my image. It was a very new field. Like, so yeah. many people were getting into it, and there were so many different perspectives. You have people from psychology, education, computer science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. I actually applied to graduate programs uh, this fall, and I got into UC uh, UT Austin and UC Berkeley so far. Wow. And I'm waiting to hear back from MIT and Stanford. Hey, man. Yeah. 
PhD programs? Yeah, PhD programs. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. The future doctor, Cody <laughs> Coleman. This is great. Yeah. From high school, my teachers were a big support. So like, uh, my teachers like yeah. are like family to me. So I told them as well, and everyone was like mm -hmm. super ecstatic and excited about it. So yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So everyone's really happy back home, and I, I I always try to tell them what's going on back home so that they can motivate the students and be like, you can do this too. Education to me is kind of like a three part problem. I think I, I told you this before, Quentin. Yeah. Uh, so so it's a three part problem. So you have this kind of motivational aspect, you have an inspirational aspect, and then you have like a teaching aspect. Yeah. So the acronym that I created for this is MIT, which it's is very, nice. It's very nice. Uh, yeah, so it's a, uh, it's a, uh I think that it's this three-part problem. A lot of people focus on teaching and um, like uh, engaging students through like material and like how to get like focus on the consumption aspect of it. And I think that the aspects of motivation and inspiration are kind of neglected sometimes. Especially thinking about my experience, where you don't have like role models related to you by blood. You know what I've really uh, looked at is encouraging more high achievement. I I'm not really concerned about you know getting people past state standards and yeah. you know, the bottom necessarily. I'm more interested in showing people the top yeah. and showing people how to get to the top, you yeah. know, providing that role model yeah. uh, approach. Yeah, definitely. And um, you know, what are the commonalities um, you know, amongst all high achieving mm -hmm. students, black, white, Asian, Latino, mm -hmm. like what are their commonalities yeah. and what are the differences? Yeah. And so I went to graduate school, I did a little you know, mm. work on that. And that's kind of why I'm here at MIT, you know, because yeah. I'm really interested in having, you know, uh, more spaces for high achieving students and mm -hmm. uh, providing more opportunities for students who are talented, bright, hardworking, but maybe under resourced in mm -hmm. some particular way yeah. to kind of close that gap. Yeah. And th that building out something like that, that's not scalable mm -hmm. because you're going to need different approaches for different types of students. You know what I mean? Because I know, like in data science, computer science, so like, yeah. how do we make things scale? Like, yeah. Business entrepreneurship, yeah. like, how do we just blow yeah. this up? But it's not uh, scalable in the sense because people are different; they require different things, yeah, and definitely. so it's more boutique. You have to have a menu of boutique opportunities yeah. in order to, like, the mites program, right? Yeah. Like, you can only have one mites program, and you can only scale it so yeah. big. You can't have mites at every single college campus. Yeah. Like it'll be a program, but it's not gonna have the same effect. Yeah, definitely. As mites. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that other universities can't establish programs mm -hmm. targeted toward the same type of population. Yeah in order to improve uh, academic performance. They just have to do it in a different way. What's a lesson that you would teach in Dificated GQ? Get your life together. <laughs> Get your life together. <laughs> Get your life together immediately. The thing about MIT that I really like is that you have um, different uh, grades of students in terms of their sartorial sophistication, right? So you have some very well-appointed students here who, you know, know about the latest trends and, you know, yeah. very stylish. But you also have some students here who don't wear shoes. Yeah, that's true. Did you hear me? I said no shoes. Indoors and outdoors. Hold on. Zoom in. <laughs> you come to me. Zoom in. No shoes. Yeah, if you're dealing with somebody with no shoes, like, first fashion tip is put on some shoes. <laughs> <laughs> or fashion tip is like, Take a shower. Like, cause the, if you're not wearing shoes, like you're probably neglecting some other things too. <laughs> so let's get you in some water, scrub that up.